y'all. Welcome to Fresh Pink Farmhouse. My name is Melissa and I'm so glad that you're here. So today's DIY is inspired by April Griffin. Y'all have to go check out her channel. She's been doing a lot of Trash to Treasure, which y'all know is totally my jam. She also makes the most beautiful wreaths and has like the best taste in crafts and decor. So y'all go check her out. The best thing is that she is my cousin. So that's really exciting for me to see her, my glasses are sliding, um, to see her channel grow and to see all the fun things that she's making because we live far apart. She's in Florida and I'm in North Carolina. So we don't get to see each other. So it's really fun for us to connect through YouTube and making all of these fun DIY projects. The second DIY that I did is inspired by Barb from The Shabby Tree. I am addicted to some Barb. She has a Facebook page. That's where she mostly does all of her fun things and crafts. Um, so y'all go check her out. She has a blog and a YouTube channel as well. So I had a lot of fun making both of these projects and I hope y'all like them. If you do, make sure you give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. Here's a sneak peek of April's page. She makes the cutest things. Y'all have to go check her out. This was her latest DIY, which is so genius. She took a spaghetti container and a gelato container and made this cute milk can. Now, this was the video that inspired my DIY. She took a pepperoncini jar and upcycled it into this cute floral container. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color white. My container started out as a salsa container. So the day that April's video came out, I was sitting there eating my chips and salsa and I was like, this is the container I'm gonna use because it's just too cute. And it looked like a milk container to me. So I don't know where you live, but if you have a food line, the food line brand salsa containers make the perfect little milk container or milk jug, whatever you wanna call it. So I painted two coats of the Waverly chalk paint on and after two coats it had great coverage. Let that dry, came back with my sand and block because it had some paint strokes on there and I just wanted to smooth it out. So I just lightly sanded over my container just to kind of smooth everything out. I wasn't really trying to rough it up or anything like that. Now it did um, chip off a little bit of the paint but that was perfectly fine because I was going to cover that up. I used a dry brush just to dust it off and then I used the color ink which is also Waverly brand and some makeup sponges from Dollar General. They also have them at Dollar Tree. Pinch off the end that way it gives you the textured effect and then I just put a little bit of paint on there at a time and just hit those edges where it would naturally be worn. I wanted this to look like those white enamel pieces that's so popular right now, the farmhouse decor, because my mom decorates with the buffalo check in the black and white, and so this matched her decor perfect, and it was a little gift for her as part of her Mother's Day gift, um, which she loved, by the way. So I just hit the edges where it would naturally be worn, and just use both sides of that little makeup sponge and get that textured look on there. So after that dries, come back with a white. You can use the same sponge, just pinch off where you used it for the black paint. Just layer the white right over top of the black. Um, this just kind of takes away that boldness of the black, if that makes sense. Blends it in um, and it turned out really cute. So easy to do. It literally took me just minutes and you can do this on all sorts of things um, to give it that white enamel kind of farmhouse look. Now I made a stencil on my Cricut because my handwriting is terrible so I just used a scrap piece of vinyl. The font that I used is called the Skinny from dafont.com. So I just put my stencil on there and again used that same sponge just pinched off where I had used it for the white. Um, so this point is down to a little bitty piece of sponge but it still works perfect. I just sponged where I wanted it to have the word, which I put the word milk on there because again, it looks like a cute little milk container. Um, it really, you don't have to give it a lot of time to dry. You just paint it and immediately peel your stencil off and voila, you have a cute little milk container. Let that dry and then come back with Mod Podge and seal it. Mod Podge is just, is great. It's one of those jack of all trade kind of craft items that everybody should have in your craft room makes the perfect sealer, and this is the matte finish. 
Y'all, how cute is this? I have already bought my next jar of salsa, and as soon as it's done, I'm making myself one. So, Mama got this one. I'm getting the next one because it's too cute, and it's a win-win. You get salsa and a cute piece of farmhouse decor, and to me, that is a win. I am so in love with this. Thank you so much, April, for the inspiration. And now I'm looking at all my jars like, what can I make out of this jar? So if one thing, I've been inspired with some cool trash to treasure ideas from shopping our stash. Now this, I used a travel pillow and a kitchen towel. I think I found this kitchen towel a while back at a store called Hamrick. It's similar to like a TJ Maxx. They have home decor and clothing and things like that. So I picked this towel up a while back because it was cute. Um, so then I was like, I'm going to make a pillow like Barb did. So I'm using Sure Bonder fabric glue sticks. Um, and I have a glue gun that's dedicated strictly to just these fabric sticks because I don't want to mix regular hot glue and the fabric hot glue in the chamber. So I only use this one for my fabric glue sticks. So this is as easy as it gets, especially for somebody like me that is a non-sewer. Um, I can glue stuff, iron stuff, but I cannot sew stuff. So this is right at my alley. So I just glued the edge together. Now, with that being said... After I made this DIY, I went back and watched Barb's tutorial, and of course, I did mine the hard way. She only glues the bottom edge together, flips it inside out, and then just glues the edges straight up without them being inside out, if that makes sense. But you know me, I'm going to do it the hard way. So I had glued one of the side edges and the bottom edge together. Um, which is totally fine. It just took a little bit longer. Um, it was a little bit more challenging. So after you glue your edge or edges together, flip your, we're going to call it a pillowcase now because it's not a dish towel anymore because we're making it a pillow, inside out, just push out those corners. And I don't know who figured this out, but the travel pillows from Walmart, or I'm assuming anywhere, fit perfectly inside of the dish towel. So you could use the polyfill, but this pillow is inexpensive and it's super easy to shove it in. So now this is where it got a little challenging for me since I did it the hard way. I only worked one section at a time. I just turned it inside out and just very carefully just glued that little section together and worked my way down. The hard part was that you had to kind of keep the pillow stuffed in and turn the edge inside out at the same time. Um, so that was a little bit challenging. The good thing about this Sherbonder fabric glue is that when you put it on, it dries really quickly. And once you stick the fabric together, it is stuck. So once you've glued it together, it's glued together. There's no going back. So I just carefully stuffed and glued those little edges. And it, it really wasn't that hard and it didn't take me that long but it would have been so much easier if I had paid attention and just glued the bottom edge and then glued the side edges. But it turned out cute. Um, and I like the look. Like it does look like it's actually sewn and not glued. So then I just fluffed it out. It's so easy. And I mean, now I want to go buy all the kitchen towels up because they make the cutest pillows. And this project, I mean, just look how cute it is perfect so look at those hand towels when y'all are out shopping because they make the cutest pillows ever so i am so in love with both of these diys y'all will have to tell me what y'all think and of course don't forget to subscribe for more diys thanks y'all